It's Tempe Phoenix and KSLX HD2 Scottsdale Phoenix. Coming right up, another fun varsity sports show. In 2019, the JV Sports Show podcast began with the idea of spotlighting young people in our community. In time, that podcast evolved into radio, television, and live stream, and through that evolution, new ideas have enhanced delivery, giving a stage to students both in front of and behind the microphone in Arizona and beyond. Thank you for supporting the Varsity Sports Show, now the Varsity Media Foundation, a 501c3 educational organization. The Varsity Sports Show is once again proud to partner with Grand Canyon University Club Sports in 2023 and 24. Join us in our coverage of GCU Club Sports on Saturday's Varsity Sports Show and the rest of the week. We'll cover hockey, soccer, baseball, rugby, lacrosse, and more. The Lopes are back on the Varsity Sports Show. Hi, kids. This is DJ Soulman from the Funk Junkies, and you're listening to the Varsity Sports Show with my man Vince Delicio. And what's, what's your last name? <laughs> it's it's Delicio. Okay, that's right. That's yeah, what I thought. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. AM 1060 KDUS Tempe Phoenix and KSLX HD2 Scottsdale Phoenix. This program is paid for by the Varsity Media Foundation, a 501c3 nonprofit educational organization, and its partners. You're listening to the Varsity Sports Show, home of Arizona's youth, high school, college sports, and you, empowering education and enabling dreams, right here on KDUS AM 1060 in Arizona. And now, welcome to the Varsity Sports Show. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Varsity Sports Show on AM 1060 KDUS Arizona. It is Saturday, September 16th, 2023. Wow, we're already, gosh, four or five games into the high school football season, depending on what level you're playing. Uh, and what a season it's been so far. Vince Delicio here. So excited to be back in studio. Last week I was uh, I was in Las Vegas. Actually, at this time of the morning, I'd gotten up and was on our, our way back into town. Um, but uh, and Ryan Sakura and and the rest of the team, admirable job filling in, nice work, gentlemen and ladies. And uh, that being said, we've got three more team members that uh, are joining me in studio this morning that we're going to introduce. Um, and we have to we forgot to do the selfie. Normally we do the selfie during pre-show, but we'll do it. And we'll post it. So left to right, Connor Manning, uh, Kobe Van Nort, and Lucas Metzner. Guys, how's it going, Connor? Starting with you, how's it going? It's going pretty good so far. Honestly, I was really excited for the opportunity to work with Varsity Sports, and it's lived up to the expectations and the hype that I've had being able to wow. call for Arcadia so far. So I'm nice. re really happy with the progression. Yeah, you've been working with the Arcadia Titans, who are on a, a, a 4 0 run right now, bringing some tradition back to East Phoenix, which Scottsdale District, but East Phoenix. Nice. Go do you think you have something to do with their 4-0 run, uh, Connor? <laughs> I don't know about that, but <laughs> they, they've looked really good recently. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, just looking at how they are and looking at the rest of their schedule, like they – they have an opportunity to finish really high in the rankings and yeah. looking forward to, for that potential postseason run. Nice. Well, we'll we'll hear from uh, Jeff Alba with uh, Arcadia Titan Football. He's been a, a mainstay on the program every week. We love having Jeff on. He's very no-nonsense, gives us uh, the breakdown and, and kind of a recap of the, the game and a look ahead. So, uh, Kobe, Kobe Van Nort, you're, he, thank you for joining us this morning. And what have you been up to? Yeah. Oh, well, I've just been enjoying this varsity internship so far. I yeah. mean, uh, I've been able to work for Brophy, which has been so fun nice. so far. So far, starting out 3-1. and one. I mean, just it's been fun to watch on both sides of the ball, offense and defense. Uh, it's been fun just to be a part of. I wish, I, I, I wish, I bet they wish they could have that first game back 
the the loss to Williamsfield. Completely. It, yeah. that, that was a devastating loss. Yeah. Well, we're going to have a chance. We're going to hear from uh, offensive coordinator uh, Tony Cotton, who will be joining us this morning in segment number two, I think. And then last but certainly not least, we have the Lucas Metzner. Mr. Metzner, how are you, sir? Great. It is so great to be here. I love working with the Varsity Sports Show. Finally, time to get a chance to co-host. Very yeah. exciting stuff. Um, Who are you working with this fall? Brophy as well. Oh, you got you. So, so you guys have been swapping we'll off. Uh, team, yeah. Yeah. And we got uh, Avi Singh, who's a, a senior at Brophy and part of our internship as well. That's been kind of on that three man rotation of calling games. So, what are your thoughts, uh, Lucas, on on just doing what you're doing and doing it with Brophy? I think everything's been amazing. Varsity sports was my number one choice in terms of internship. Wow. So, so glad I got in. It's been a pleasure to work. Like, I've met great people like Kobe. Yeah. So, we've been having... You guys you know, didn't know each other before uh, this uh, season? Not at all. No? Nope. Oh, nice. Okay. Well, you guys are getting... You got Connor over here, too. So, that's good. So, you all got right. new connections. You know, yeah. I've had a chance to do both play-by-play and color for the Brophy Broncos. And yeah. it's been a special treat. That's a pretty special team. Uh, head coach Jason Jewell is a great guy. He's been fun to work with yeah. and watch their team. Both sides of the ball, lots of talent. Well, and I, I'll tell you now, <laughs> I'm going to get on a little. So I try not to get on a soapbox because we I I try to, you know, just cut the BS and, and let our audience judge for themselves on everything. We're very fortunate in that we have a strong audience that join us every Saturday morning, as well as for our, our broad game broadcasts on Thursday and Friday night. Oh, and tonight, by the way, we're starting the HJCAC, the Holcomb Junior College Athletic Conference Game of the Week. So we'll be carrying that as well. Um, but my soapbox. So <laughs> I've worked with a lot of great administrators. Um, I spent, I coached, in case any of you guys know uh, or don't know, uh, I coached probably, gosh, half my adult life, almost 20 years, I was, uh, I was on the sidelines. I coached various um, sides of the ball. I was a head coach very briefly. I mean, we're talking for a minute. And um, uh, coached all levels, uh, from youth, sports, all the way up to Division One. And I was very fortunate, never took anything for granted. I've worked with a lot of good administrators. I've worked with a few bad ones, too, and we try to to forget those. Um, But um, this week was an interesting week because, um, again, this is not reflective of anybody out there other than who is being, you know, this is being directed toward. But we had one district that, you know, we, we set these schedules up weeks, months in advance, our broadcast schedules. We have a very talented teams like you. This year, we're up to six or seven, which is amazing in and of itself. There's a lot of moving parts. Guys, it's tough to broadcast a game with everything to go right. Things are not always going to go right. You're not always going to have sound right away. You're not always going to have video. Uh, You know, things, your feed could be off. Your Wi-Fi could be off. It's very stressful and managing all those parts. And we try to provide as much support as possible uh, but at the same time it's a very stressful thing and when things go well you're on top of the world when things don't you feel like you're six inches tall um, so scheduling is one thing that we hope is is the least of our concerns this week we got blocked by a certain ad- administration and we couldn't do a game and it made it very difficult and here's the thing we get it you there are certain schools that have their own student networks more power to you we want to be there to support you but at the same time guys let us do what we do because we're just going to bring more eyes and ears to what you're doing that are ultimately going to put the kids on a stage it's about putting the kids on a stage and providing opportunities to young people to do what they do and otherwise if you're an administrator Stay out of the way. (laughs) Stay out of the way. Provide the support that you need to provide. Let your coaches be out in front and a good administration. Saguaro's Matt Harris, perfect example of that. That guy, if if he were if he weren't, first of all, six eight, six nine, you wouldn't know who he was in a crowd because he stays out of the way. He knows to provide support and then allow his admin his his coaches to do what they're gonna do to spotlight the kids. He'll provide that support. Joe Goodman from Mountain View is another one. Uh, Max Ragsdale, Campo Verde. I've known Max since we were GAs at ASU 30 years ago. Perfect example. And this guy coached, and he gets it, and he knows to stay out of the way. So, guys, don't make it about yourselves. Please don't make it about yourselves. Make it about the kids. Make it about the the surrounding people that that are working hard day in and day out. Stay out of the way. And and let us do what we're going to do. 
Um, ultimately, it's for the betterment of all of our young people and providing opportunities. If I'm if if I'm I'm playing in a game, okay, and I have a great game against a top tier team like uh, like a Saguaro uh, or like a Hamilton or like a Chandler or you know whatever the list goes on and on, like a Liberty. And I'm playing from a program for a program that doesn't get a lot of attention, and I have a great game against one of those teams, and there happens to be a college coach that's watching one of those top-tier players, and he sees me get three sacks in a game. All of a sudden, I'm going to be probably be on their radar. That's one of the things that we're able to do is that we we bring that. We're very fortunate. We bring that audience. We bring that attention because we're covering a lot of those teams. Stay out of the way. Thank you. Uh, this this uh, this public service announcement brought to you by Vince Delicio and Vince Delicio only, uh, not reflective of anything at Varsity Sports Show. But again, administrators support us, help us out. Okay. That being said, we're going to get right into the show and we're going to get a recap of one of our games. Aaron, take it away. This is the Titan Report, featuring Arcadia Titans football. On the Varsity Sports Show. I had to change the music because we ran into some copyright issues. We were playing Beatles Helter Skelter and we were getting blocked when the, the show was being uploaded to YouTube. Anyway, hope that's a little bit better. Uh, joining us on the line, the 4 and 0. Gosh, I never thought I'd be saying this, but there's been a total culture shift. The 4 0, Arcadia Titans, another big win last night. Joining us on the line from Arcadia Titans football, Mr. Jeff Alba. Jeff, welcome to the show. Thank you, Vince. Good morning. How are you guys doing today? Oh, man, we are doing amazing. We're joined in studio by Connor, Kobe, and Lucas. And uh, Connor, take it away. You got some questions for Jeff. Jeff, Connor here. First off, it's been a blast being able to call Arcadia the last few weeks. First off, thank you for being on the show. What can you say about the crowd and energy that the Arcadia faithful has brought those first two home games? Because it's been loud. Yeah, we had another great crowd last night. Um, we had a special event going on as well. It was our future Titan night for both uh, the junior football players as well as as, as well as uh, junior cheerleaders. So we had a, a, an extra turnout last night. But our, our normal crowd always gives us so much great support, and that really helps the team to have the uh, stands full on our Friday nights. Well, it was certainly quite the spectacle seeing all the young future Titans out there. Secondly, another big win, another dominant performance by this Arcadia offense. They just seem to keep getting better and better every week. Yeah, it's fun to watch. Um, I think we're the whole team really is, is really starting to find our rhythm and hit our stride, you know, being 4-0. Um, I think we're really starting to generate some buzz in, in the state. Maybe people are starting to notice a little bit more and talk about us. But, yeah, the offense is definitely our strength. That's obvious through the first four games. Um, we are just rolling. I mean, we're putting up big numbers, uh, big points. I think we had 42 points last night. Um, you know, Braylon Rooney, our quarterback, continues to do it. such a great job spreading the ball around to um, all the weapons that we have on offense. Um, and he does a good job of mixing it up. And, again, uh, B.J. Pasquale, our offensive coordinator, and also Jeremiah Dor Dorsett, who's our wide receivers coach, does an excellent job coaching up the wide receivers. Absolutely. And it seemed like every time Rooney was thrown into the end zone, it was getting caught. Jeremy Smith, two touchdown grabs last night. He was our player of the game. He was just one of many offensive weapons. But the defense has also really stepped up. Coconino was averaging 218 yards on the ground per game, and they really couldn't get anything going last night. Yeah, that was a big statement game for our defense for sure. I think everyone was kind of looking at that game going into it and really curious to see how it was going to turn out. And, and I think eyes were really uh, on the defense in particular, and they stepped up big time and uh, – you know, did their job. And, you know, when you have a combination of a defense like that performing in our offense, you know, doing what they normally do every week and putting up these big numbers, um, it's really become a, a great combination uh, for our team. And, and uh, we're looking pretty good moving forward. Absolutely. Max Preps has you guys ranked number nine right now. I'm expecting you guys to go up in the next rankings next week on the road against Camelback. Should be a great matchup. Yeah, we're excited. I think everyone's quietly kind of had this one circled on the calendar uh, for a variety of different reasons. Um, there's some former Arcadia players that are over at Camelback now, and uh, you know we're in the, the similar neighborhoods, and um, and uh, it should be a great matchup, and everyone's real excited about it. And now, now it's here, Game 5, and, and I'm sure the team and the coaches will put in a great week of practice and preparation, and we'll be ready to go next Friday. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Jeff. 
Always a pleasure having you on and uh, looking forward to calling that game next week. Okay, sounds good, guys. We'll see you next week. Awesome. Jeff Alba from Arcadia High School Football it joins us every week, provides a lot of great insight, and uh, what an amazing turnaround for Arcadia and the culture shift in East Phoenix. Very refreshing part of the Scottsdale District. So great job over there by everyone involved, especially the kids, and we're privileged to, to be covering them. When we come back from the break, we're going to be joined by offensive coordinator Brophy Prep, Tony Cotton. Don't go anywhere, guys. Varsity Sports Show, be right back. AM 1060 is the home to the Dan Patrick Show, the Doug Gottlieb Show, and Sports Map Radio. Catch all the sports content here on AM 1060. I'm Shay Garrett from the Varsity Sports Show, and I am looking forward to immersing myself in high school sports in the Valley. I have a passion for sports and storytelling, and I am so eager for a chance to combine these two this season. Training Better Athletes was founded by renowned football coach Ron Sowers with the philosophy of training well-rounded young people in mind and body. TBA is the go-to for middle schoolers through the pros. Coach Sowers has worked with all sports but specializes in football offensive and defensive line skills training. Whether it's one-on-one -on -one or group training, reach out to Coach Sowers at trainingbetteraththletes.com or call him at 602-435-9064. You can't cheat the grind. Hey, local businesses, join the Varsity Sports Show and promote your business on our weekly radio show and game live streams. We have several options to promote your business affordably and reach our incredible audience. Call, text, or email us anytime if you'd like more information on joining our team. The Varsity Sports Show will work hard to promote your business through our audio and video platforms while also promoting all of our young people. 480-779-9437 or email us at varsitysportshow.com. Hey guys, Vince here to talk about Angel Dentistry. It's where my wife and I have gone for over 10 years and we trust them with our routine and extensive dental care because they care. Dr. Amber Angel is an Arizona native, born in the town of Miami and has been practicing in the Valley over 20 years. For general to comprehensive dental services, call 602-788-2008. Located off of Cave Creek Road, just north of the 101 in North Phoenix. Angel Dentistry, proud supporters of our young people and proud partners of the Varsity Sports Show. Catch the Doug Gottlieb Show weekdays from 1 to 3 p.m. right here on KDUS AM 1060 and online at KDUS1060.com. This is the Broncos Football Report with Brophy Broncos head coach Jason Jewell on the Varsity Sports Show AM 1060 KDUS Arizona. Welcome back to the Varsity Sports Show AM 1060 KDUS Arizona. It, yes, it is the Bronco report, but uh, we're not joined by uh, head coach Jason Jewell. He's off this week. Uh, we're awaiting, uh, hoping to have offensive coordinator Tony Cotton join us here shortly. So we'll see if we can get him on the line to give us a recap. But fortunately, we have the two broadcasters that were covering the game the other night. Another big win for Brophy, and, and this time it was against Chaparral. So, Kobe, let me start with you. You're just kind of give us a, a recap of some high points of the game. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, one of the biggest ones for sure was uh, the week prior, uh, they had lost their starting running back, Carlos Estrada, and in the first half, and he was just tearing up the place. So losing him was very, very scary for the Broncos' offense. But uh, Harrison Chambers, the second guy in command, just took control in uh, Thursday's game, uh, had over 150 rushing yards, two touchdowns. I mean, just a sensational game completely. Um, other than that, though, I mean, just on both sides of the ball, it seemed that Brophy was just completely controlling the game, um, whether it was uh, McGinnis throwing, being able to escape the pocket so easily or whatever it may have been. Um, just a great game for Brophy. Lucas, do you have any thoughts about that? Yeah, definitely. Brophy has done a great job controlling the game on all sides. And something I'd like to point out is their special teams. Their special teams is so well disciplined. They have a great tandem of kickers with Eddie Jetton and Connor Fury. Those two make sure the special teams go around. And I think, you know, you and I were talking about it. Special teams gets, you know, undervalued a lot sometimes, especially in high school football. It can really change the complexity of a game. So the Broncos are firing on all three cylinders. 
Wanted to talk about senior quarterback Charlie McGinnis a little bit. I mean, he's throwing well over 65% of his passes are complete. He's got 10 touchdowns to just two interceptions. I mean, he's tearing it up. The Broncos are well-versed on offense. They can run the ball, they can throw it, and they got weapons all over the field. Yeah, no, completely. Um, it, you bring up that kicker thing, and it's just s- such a important thing to recognize because, yeah, you're right, high school, like – there are not many guys who you can really count on. And the guy, I mean, we saw it last uh, on Thursday. He had, what was it, like a 45-yard field goal? I mean, you you have a kicker like that. It's just to get that automatic three points, it goes a long way. But, yeah, man, a great game from Brophy so far. A great game from Brophy on Thursday. Um, three and one the Brophy Broncos are so far. Unfortunately, that's a tough week one loss to Williams Field. But so far, smooth sailing and a big matchup next week. What do you think about the matchup next week against Notre Dame Prep? You know, that's going to be a tough one. Even though Notre Dame, Notre Dame Prep isn't also 6A, they play like they're a 6A school. They're, you know, NDP is always bringing it. They got, you know, a really good student environment showing out to their games. So, you know, it's going to be tough for the Broncos to go on the road once again and try and come up with a big win. Let's break in. We've got a couple minutes here. Uh, we've got uh, offensive coordinator Tony Cotton. Coach Cotton, welcome to the Varsity Sports Show. Hey, good morning, guys. Thanks for having me. How are you guys today? We're doing great, Coach. Appreciate you coming on. Uh, my first, I have a question for you. I know you guys had a really unfortunate injury. We were talking about it just a little bit earlier with Carlos Estrada, but Harrison Chambers had a night to remember on Thursday. How do you think he did taking on that larger role? Um, I think Harry did a great job. He, uh, he knew he had big shoes to fill, and, I mean, he stepped up and uh, he did what he was coached up to do, and, I mean, he just went out there and played. I mean, he's a, he's a talented kid, and he plays hard. Um, I, I'm excited for his future. I'll, I'll say that. Yes, completely. Uh, another question I have for you is seven different Broncos caught passes on Thursday night. How valuable is it to you to have a deep receiving core? Man, it's, it's awesome. Um, it, it gives us the ability to stay fresh. Um, if, if our defense needs them for whatever situation, depending on down and distance or um, if they need to take one to go play DB, I mean, that, that helps us um, because, I mean, it's almost their next man up mentality. Um, we have some young guys who, who are talented. Um, we have some older guys who are experienced. So um, it's a great mixture. Yeah, we saw um, a lot of read options on Thursday. I was just curious, what makes that play so effective? Um, our quarterback. That was a quick answer. We were expecting a little more. Just the quarterback. Okay. Go ahead, Kobe. What's the follow-up? No, 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 no. I, I'm going to say it's the quarterback. Like, um, he, he's a – as much as people may or may not know about him, like, the day he's still a Division One athlete. Like, he's committed to a Division One uh, lacrosse program um, to go play lacrosse. Um, and to make sure that I give them some love because none of it goes without them, um, I don't think the line's playing awesome, man. I've been around a lot of high school football, and I've not been around an offensive line that may be as deep or as talented as this group that we have. So, I mean, with with those five up front and him helping us lead the charge. I think we lost Coach Cotton, so he was right in the middle of a thought. Uh, Kobe, tell Coach Cotton, sorry we lost you there, but uh, Kobe, go ahead and finish his thought. In terms of he was talking about the offensive line, what did you see in the O-line the last couple games? In the last couple games, it just seems like they were creating holes for that offense. Harrison Chamber had a great week, and it just seemed like it just seemed like he was able to find those holes. But on top of that, yeah, the offensive line was breaking them open holes left and right. Nice. Uh, Lucas, your impressions? I was going to say, yeah, give credit to both the offensive and defensive line. It starts in the trenches. They were definitely controlling this game for the Broncos. I really love the offensive line's ability to – run block and pass block like Kobe said you know they were creating the running lanes getting Chambers space to run but man they were giving Charlie McGinnis some really clean pockets and when Charlie McGinnis has a clean pocket he's going to deliver that football on a spot his receiver's going to get it nice well that's great except very exciting they've got another big matchup coming this coming week Notre Dame prep we've covered them in the past they've got a Big-time passing game. We'll see how their running game's coming along against Brophy's defense. Should make for an interesting week this coming week. Uh, I, I mean, you you guys got to love covering the Brophy Broncos. It's been a lot of fun. And, oh, and by the way, Athletic Director Josh Garcia out there and SID Steve Schaff, amazing. Steve Schaff is a college guy. 
he he gets it. Uh, we've got about 30 more seconds. We lost Coach Cotton. He's back on the phone. Offensive coordinator, uh, Tony Cotton. Coach Cotton, one final question for you. Go ahead, Kobe. How are you guys preparing for Notre Dame prep coming into next week? Um, uh, I think we're going to have a good week of preparation. Um, last week was a little uh, funky. with playing on a Thursday night, but this week we'll get our three full work days. Um, and, I mean, they're a good football team. Um, and we're not going to take them lightly. We're going to do everything we can to prepare, get our guys ready to, to roll in the North Scottsdale and see if we can come away with a win. Um, we know it's not going to be easy, and it's, I mean, it'll be a heavyweight fight. So um, we're excited for it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Coach Tony Cotton. I really appreciate you coming on, and good luck to you guys next week. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Have a good weekend. Take it away, Aaron. Hey, everyone. This is Aaron Nemiroff reporting with the Varsity Sports Show. Grass fields versus artificial turf fields have been an ongoing controversy when it comes to football, specifically within the NFL. There have been plenty of players to come out and say that turf is extremely dangerous and they don't like playing on it. The leading factor as to why turf fields are more dangerous is because of the increase in non-contact injuries that they tend to cause. Injuries that appear to be non-contact in the NFL typically are some of the most gruesome and hardest to recover from. The most common of these injuries are torn ACLs or torn Achilles. It usually takes athletes a full season to recover from one of these. It's extremely disappointing because there is no contact for these injuries, so it's simply just being unlucky. However, bad luck seems to increase for players who are playing on turf, and the numbers back that up. The most recent circumstance relating to all of this was Aaron Rodgers tearing his Achilles on Monday. The entire NFL offseason was building up to Rodgers' debut with his new team, the New York Jets. The future Hall of Fame quarterback was on the field for four plays before his Achilles popped on a non-contact play. Rodgers fell to the ground and any NFL fan could see it on his face that his season was over. Randall Cobb and Brees Hall, two of Rodgers' teammates, came out and said that this injury was entirely the fault of the turf field at MetLife Stadium. Cobb stated, I never will be a fan of turf, but the NFL is more worried about making money profit over people. If these injury trends continue, the NFL could be forced to make a change regarding their fields. For the Varsity Sports Show, I'm Aaron Nemiroff. I'm Ryan Sakura. You're listening to KDUS AM 1060, the Varsity Sports Show, every Saturday morning, 8 to 10. Another week, another tough opponent for Arizona State Sun Devil football. 1-1 one one ASU hosts the unbeaten Fresno State Bulldogs tonight, led by a transfer quarterback whose roots reside in Phoenix. Former Chandler Wolf Mikey Keene is now a redshirt sophomore in college and attending his second Division I university. Keene led Chandler to an undefeated season his senior year a couple of years ago, including a second consecutive Open 8 playoff title. The 5'11", 200-pound signal caller never lost a game as a starter at Chandler. That senior year, he threw 22 touchdowns and just two picks. He committed to play football at UCF. He played 15 times in Orlando, earning 11 starts and going 8-3 as a starter. He played 11 times as a true freshman and only four starts his sophomore year. That caused him to move on to Fresno State to play under culture and QB guru, Jeff Tedford. Early returns in California have been positive for Keene. The nationally ranked number 13 transfer quarterback in the country won the starting job and has delivered FSU to the periphery of the top 25, heading into just week number three. The offense is averaging 36 and a half points per game, and Keene has managed to eke out two wins from two close contests against Power 5 Purdue and constant FCS contender Eastern Washington. Keene has thrown for just shy of 600 yards, tossing six scores and two interceptions in the process. The kid from Chandler's doing all right. The Valley native returns with one sight in mind, take down Dillingham and the Devils. For the Varsity Sports Show, I'm Ryan Sikor. 
Welcome back to the Varsity Sports Show, and uh, wow, it, incredible. It was it was great. We've had a couple of great interviews so far. We talked to Jeff Alba from Arcadia Titan Football, 4-0 now. you got the Brophy Broncos offensive coordinator, Tony Cotton, coming in and weighing in on uh, uh, what the keys to their success have been so far. Lucas, what do we have coming up next? Really exciting change of pace. We got the girls' flag football game of the week, and we're going to be talking to head coach Matt Stone of the Hamilton High School He's in charge of that program, and he's got some good stuff to say, so we'll talk to him right after the break. You're listening to the Varsity Sports Show on KDUS 1060, Phoenix, Arizona. Interact with Bob Kemp's poll question on KDUS1060.com. That's KDUS1060.com. And while you're there, check out Bob Kemp's bottom line at KDUS1060.com. I'm Lorenzo Lopez with the Varsity Sports Show, keeping you all informed with sports here around the Valley. The Angry Crab Shack in Tempe. With an experience so good, it remains indescribable. With something for every seafood lover. Try one of their amazing custom seafood boils, sandwiches, appetizers, and salads. Angry Crab Shack Tempe is located east of I-10 on Warner Road, 480-674-3847. The Angry Crab Shack in Tempe. Come ready to eat. Hey guys, Vince here. I'd like to introduce you to my friend, Eric Perry. He owns Eco Roofing Solutions. They're local and a big supporter of high school sports all over Arizona. Yes, they're statewide. A little bit about me and Eco Roofing Solutions and what we're about. I'm a third generation roofer here in Arizona and I've been doing this for 25 years. Call Eric and his team at Eco Roofing Solutions, 480-695-7736 and they'll give you a fast, free, no-nonsense estimate. Tell them Vince sent you. Extra Point with local and national topics, betting lines, and banter. Weekdays 10 to noon on KTUS AM 1060, KTUS1060.com, and the KTUS 1060 app. You are listening to the Varsity Sports Show. The Varsity Sports Show. Thursday night. Thursday night flag football game of the week recap. Flag football game of the week recap. Welcome back to the Varsity Sports Show, AM 1060, KDUS Arizona. One thing, it, we've tried to be as innovative as can be here on, on uh, Varsity Sports Show. Um, four years ago, we brought back the Thursday night high school football game of the week. And now it's like everybody does it. This year, we wanted to do something a little bit different. And it required a little bit of investment from us on uh, not only in terms of staffing and crew, but at the same time in um, press and, and just risk. Um, and and we and it's been good risk for us. It, it's 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 very popular now, and it's continuing to grow. And that's flag football. It's a brand new AIA sport, debuted in the spring. We are doing a Thursday night flag football game of the week every week. Man, it is some good football. And joining us on the line is this week. Uh, they had a big win over Desert Vista, Hamilton High head flag football coach Matt Stone. Good morning, Coach Stone. How are you? Hey, very good. Thanks for having me on. All right, Lucas, take it away. Coach, thank you for being here with us today. Very exciting to hear. Um, what is the impact that it, that this flag football is now an AIA varsity sport? I think you can see it in, in a couple of different ways. You know, we're at 56 high schools this year playing. I, I think that number is going to double, to be honest with you, next year. Um, but where you really see the impact is in the quality of athletes who are now playing. You know, we've, we've been doing this sport for quite a few years. But once the AAA took control of the sport, the the level of athlete that's coming out to play this particular sport really changed. And we've seen that not only in our own games, but in some of the video clips I've seen of other games. Um, there is just a, a wealth of talent throughout Arizona right now. Yeah, definitely a lot of talent and exciting plays. Speaking of your team over at Hamilton, you starting the season out 4-1 and one on the year. You have three shutout victories. What can you say about your defense? Defense, you know, okay, so we played really great, really through the first four games. Uh, the Red Mountain lost. The defense really played very well in that game. Um, offense got going pretty late in that game, and, and we just couldn't pull it out in the end. Credit to Red Mountain. Um, but I'll tell you what, Desert Vista made us 
uh, have to relook at some of what we do defensively. They put up 31 on us and, and um, a phenomenal offense. But what our, def- our defense has always been our backbone. That's, that's what we pride ourselves on. And um, it's, it's just a team mentality. It's not about numbers and, and who has the most sacks or interceptions. It's about rallying and, and bringing the whole team together and communicating on the field to try to get the job done each play. Absolutely. And, you know, with the with the one exception, you guys have scored a lot of points. What's the best part about the offense? We uh, One of the things with our offense, you know, we return a lot of leadership, a, a lot of experience there, obviously beginning with our quarterback, uh, CeCe Macagnano. We we want we want to throw the ball. I mean that's not a secret. I mean I think in flag football most teams try to go to the air. Um, but one thing that we've been trying to get to is a little bit more balance. And and really in the last game in Cesar Vista we were able to actually get a more consistent running game, and that just helps our our, our passing game even more. We didn't have a great offensive game against Red Mountain, and, and that really showed. But um, for us, you know, we want to get in a rhythm. We want we want to start try try to establish multiple receivers and a good running game, so that you know, late in the game when we need that drive, it's there. And I think for us, having that leadership, especially at the quarterback position, is where everything else just clicks. Absolutely, Coach. Thank you so much for coming on today. It was great to hear about the team and how much the sport is growing. It's exciting stuff, exciting football. So thank you for your time. You're welcome. Have a good one. That was awesome. You know, it, it was, it's been quite an, an experience witnessing the, the play uh, with flag football. I mean, I was, I was a little nervous. First of all, the games were a little earlier in the afternoon. We're talking like this week's game was at 4 p.m. Guys, this is Phoenix. And, uh, and fortunately, we're able to get the press box uh, to, to broadcast these games where it's a little bit cooler at least. You're in the shade, and sometimes there's AC, and sometimes there isn't. You just have to open a window. But all credit to, to you know, those athletes out there. Those girls are playing amazing football. Uh, you know, we're going to transition now, and we're covering something very special in going into our second year here. Take it away, Aaron. So we are joined on the line by Grand Canyon University club men's hockey coach his name is Danny Roy and uh, you talk about a program that's that's not only on the rise but they've been on the rise uh, and have have really uh, played some great hockey here in the valley it's the GCU club men's hockey program and and we're fortunate in our studio first of all we're fortunate that we have this partnership uh, with Dr. Dan Nichols uh, Jim Howell the SID of the GCU uh, club sports program and all the amazing coaches and staff and athletes out at Grand Canyon University but we in studio we also have a club hockey player here his name is Connor Manning so you talk about a broadcast team from all walks of life uh, first of all let me welcome our guest coach Roy how you doing sir I'm doing great. I'm up here in my hometown of Santa Rosa for the weekend, enjoying the 65 degrees. Oh, man. Getting back into Phoenix in the heat. I'll tell you what, Coach, that that is amazing, and and you're going to be back here soon enough. But we also, one of our broadcast team members, we draw from all walks of life, and actually Connor plays for the ASU club uh, hockey team. And, uh, Connor, I'm going to let you lead off the questioning with Coach Roy because Coach Roy has been a mainstay in the program. This is eighth year now and has really built this thing from the ground up. Uh, Connor, take it away. First off, Coach Roy, thank you for having us on. Last year was really the year for GCU uh, hockey program. Division One, finishing the year ranked for the first time ever. And GCU D2 obviously getting that first regionals appearance. What is the what can you attest to the overall excitement for the future for the future level of this program? Yeah, I mean, finishing uh, we were finishing in the top twenty five for the first year at D1. Our our D2 team won their conference championship for the first time um, and was able to get back to the D2 regional for the first time since uh, we had a D2 team the last time before we moved up to D1. Um, you know, the coaches pool started with us uh, in the top 25 again that just came out and got posted. And we got a lot of, a lot of exciting new players coming, coming in with a lot of skill, a lot of speed this year. Um, and that's both, both at our Division One level and Division Two level, so it's it's been a, a really exciting few weeks of uh, camp and and first week of practices, and now we can't wait to get into games there soon. 
Coach, what's it like? I'm looking at your schedule for this fall, and it looks like a very unforgiving schedule. You know, you talk about, I mean, you get to the pinnacle of success. That's all well and good. But but now you're expected to continue that run, to continue competing, which is, you know, it's a good thing. The expectations are high, a little bit of pressure. But what does that do to your psyche with your team? I mean, I'm looking at this schedule. This is brutal. Yeah, I mean, it's not an easy start. We uh, we see UNLV four four times in the first uh, two weeks of our or three weeks of our our D one conference schedule. So it's it's not an easy start. But I, I've always focused on having the toughest schedule for our our players every year. Um, our our guys like to compete. They they want to be pushed. Um, they they don't want to have a, a cupcake type schedule. Um, and it, it challenges them. It's it's it shows our 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 you know times in, in adversity and and things like that. But it, it's it's what we want. It's what our guys want. And um, yeah, it's, it's unforgiving. I mean, we go all the way all the way into December and and have to face off against the defending national championships up in Minot as well. So it's it's going to be fun. A lot of fun opponents. Um, a lot of tough games. I would say everybody that we play against, for the most part, it, it almost seems like a rivalry. Um, uh, it doesn't matter who it is, if they're an in-state or an out-of-state opponent. Coach Roy Lucas here. I got one question for you. Um, you know, you've been at GCU Men's Club Hockey for multiple years now, and you kind of built this program from the ground up, like we said. What was that like, expanding the program to the American College Hockey Association at all levels, D1, 2, and 3? Yeah, it's been it's been a lot of work and a lot of fun at the same time. Uh, it's, it's, we've had our growing pains consistently, and and every time we've added on a new team, it, that that team unfortunately has to be the growing pains. But um, the guys the guys that stick with it and, and stamp their legacy on the program and push it forward um, have started to see that that benefit come back and, and pay them back. Um, I use our D two team as an example. The, the, the second team that we've had has had struggled um, to get their their bearings going, and um, finally, after all the hard work, got to see the see the light at the end of the tunnel and, and get a championship. and And I was I was fortunate enough to be out there with those guys and experience it with them, and and told them how proud I was of them to to keep their their heads down and keep going. So, um, you know, it's, there's always been a vision. Um, it's always a five year plan, and and keep pushing forward and find new ways to. To continue to uh, excel the program and, and and push our athletes to to do the same and and give them something proud to to look back on when they come back as an alum. Coach Roy Connorman here again. We talked about that grueling schedule early. I was just looking at that schedule as well. I noticed December 1st and 2nd this year, you guys are heading up to North Dakota, taking on the team that really was at the top of the pack all season, the defending champions, Minot State University. What has that got to feel like to know that you're really going up against the big boys this year? It's uh, We've we've seen them before in the past, and and I, they're, they're very good, very consistent, big hockey players that can move fast, move the puck well. Um, I think uh, this is this is a year that we have an opportunity to to skate with them for three full periods and and be competitive. You know, obviously that's we want to make sure we have the healthiest roster at that point, and that's pretty deep in the first semester to, to hold for that. But um, at the end of the day, I think if we stick to our process that we've we we built on in in the second half of last year, that really ex- expelled us up in the rankings. Um, uh, we got a shot, so it's. It's to show our guys what the, the top of the peak looks like, um, to, to show them if, if we're going to get to the national tournament and compete when we get there, that's, that's the type of team that we're going to have to face, and, and we're going to have to bring our best against them. Well, Coach Roy, thank you so much. Looks like there's a lot to be excited about for this GCU club program this year. I know I'm looking forward to playing against that D2 team. Thank you so much for being on with us today. Yeah, thank you so much. I love, love jumping on and chat with you guys. That was Danny Roy from uh, GCU Men's Club Hockey, and this guy has has really established himself as as you know as a professional in the coaching ranks in the hockey circles. He could literally be in any part of the country now, and he he uh, chooses to stay at GCU, and it's a good partnership because the support that GCU Club offers as well is is second to none. Like I said, I've been in their facilities. 
they they pour a lot of money and a lot of resources into their club program to where you know they they are recruiting a lot of the top talent uh, and and really giving even some some you know NC two A programs to run for their money. So uh, way to go, GCU club men's hockey. We are privileged. We're going to be covering a couple of the games later in the show. We're also going to be featuring women's club hockey coach Jess Conlon. And uh, stick around for that, guys. Uh, when we come back from the break. We actually, we're going to pivot. We've got Coach Doug Madoski from the HJCAC Maricopa Mustangs. They debut tonight, season opener. I'm calling that game out at Cortez High School. When we come back here on the Varsity Sports Show, don't go anywhere, guys. Coach Madoski and us will be back. Go Varsity. Every Monday night, check out Ray Adams as he hosts the Monday Night Golf and Lifestyle Show from 6 to 7 p.m. here on KDUS AM 1060. Hi, this is pro sport fisherman Ryan Kirkpatrick of Benton, Kentucky, and you're listening to the home of youth, high school, college, and you, the Varsity Sports Show on AM 1060, KDUS, Arizona. Hey, local businesses, join the Varsity Sports Show and promote your business on our weekly radio show and game live streams. We have several options to promote your business affordably and reach our incredible audience. Call, text, or email us anytime if you'd like more information on joining our team. The Varsity Sports Show will work hard to promote your business through our audio and video platforms while also promoting all of our young people. 480-779-9437 or email us at varsitysportshow.com. When you think of family restaurants and sports bars, think Bonfire. Bonfire is part of the Tempe landscape, supporting local schools. Join the Bonfire Booster Club Challenge. Mention Corona del Sol, Desert Vista, Marcos Denisa, Mountain Point, or Valley Christian, and that school's sports program will earn loyalty points. The winner after football season will earn a fundraiser at Bonfire. Come for the food and fun. Support the community. Bonfire. Open every day east of I-10 on Warner. Show your game ticket all day Friday and Saturday and get 15% off. 480-306-6801. Check out KDUS AM 1060 on 100.7 KSLX HD2. That's right, HD Radio on 100.7 channel number two. Welcome back to the Varsity Sports Show, AM 1060, KDUS Arizona. Starting off our Saturday morning with a little Van Hagar. And that's one of my favorite songs. Um, what a show so far. You know, it's <laughs> a, a lot of a lot of these shows like to, I don't know, I don't, I'm not trying to, you know, stereotype, but some of these shows try to like, kind of like space out their guests so that they get the most mileage out of what they're featuring. We just go right into it, and we've already featured three, four top top. Uh, programs and guests in in the show and uh, we just wrapped up with GCU club men's hockey coach Danny Roy uh, who's built quite a program over there and uh, we're fortunate because on the line with us another top program and who's arguably the dean of junior college football coaches in the country himself he was at uh, he was a mainstay winningest coach at Scottsdale Community College and there have been some great coaches that have come through that program uh, but uh, started a league called the Hohokam Junior College Athletic Conference, providing opportunities for young people. That's what we're about, providing opportunities for young people to continue to give them a choice and option to develop and to learn and to be mentored by, by amazing people. And I don't tell him this to his face. I don't want him to get a, you know, a big head about it. But he really is inspirational to a lot of young people. His name is Doug Madoski. Coach Madoski, I'm hoping you, you didn't hear what I just said. I actually didn't. But it worked out well. <laughs> Coach, wait, I can't tell you. First of all, you're, I consider you a friend. And I know that, you know, in this business, it, it is a business at times. But I, I really enjoy working with you. And as the years go on, I continue to appreciate you more and more because we've had, you know, some bumps in the road in, in working with other entities and things. And then you come back to your relationship with, with people that, that were there from the beginning and you appreciate them that much more. So for that, I thank you. Um, and and I thank you for the fact that you continue to, to to offer these opportunities to young people. This has got to be, is this year five or six for you with the HJCAC? I think we're going into year five. Five. I mean, 
I mean, they all run together at some point, but yeah. I, I believe we're starting year five tonight. How how does it feel to to be able to establish something? It, there were a lot of people that said you couldn't do it, and now all of a sudden, this is the fifth year of this thing. You you have a proven product, and you've been put big biggest thing is the proof is in the pudding. Despite you know whatever wins and losses, whatever you're pushing kids out. How does that make you feel? I mean, that's really what it's all about. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we, we felt like we needed to provide an opportunity for to, for kids to grow and and to achieve their goals. And, and for us, the big thing is that, you know, we're trying to grow better people, we're trying to grow better men, uh, you know, the, the next leaders of this country at some point. Uh, you know, so for us, it was just about doing the right thing and, and giving these guys an opportunity and whatever it is that they want to do. And certainly anytime you can be a part of somebody's success, it's, it's, it is exciting to do. So I'm more excited for what we started up and, you know, big things still to come. You were uh, you were wearing multiple hats for a couple of years after you after the program uh, ended with the Maricopa Community Colleges and this thing got off the ground. You got it going for you know a year or two, and then all of a sudden you had an opportunity. You were the head football coach at Glendale Mountain Ridge High School, and so kind of pulling double duty there. Now that you've stepped away from that and you're concentrating fully on the Holcomb Junior College Athletic Conference and the Maricopa Mustangs. What what does this season look like for you? Besides the fact you're not sleeping much these days in, in running this league and coaching this team, but what does it look like? Yeah, you know, it's actually interesting. I was talking to my wife last night and said, I don't know how in the world it was that I had more time to be able to do both last year because I don't know how I would. <laughs> I mean, I'm just as I'm literally driving down the road thinking, it's, it's like I I don't have any more time, and and certainly doing both of them was, you know, I had some share of challenges, but. You know, I mean, I think that that really, at the end of the day, we're, we're just trying to – we just want to get better. I mean, so when I look at this year, I mean, it's kind of a weird year for me. It's kind of a unique year from the standpoint of I sat down at Mountain Ridge High School, but I've done so after a, after a bulk of the recruiting season had ended. Um, you know, so so really haven't been able to go out and, and get fully going, I guess you could say, back into that into that realm of, you know, sitting down with families and then how it is and explain the, the value of what it is that we're doing and why it's an easy college football is a better option. Um, then some of the option, other options that they may have sitting out there when you start looking at, you know, taking out the high levels of student loans and you know, creating debt for yourself. And, and even though people make it sound like, you know, this is all, it's all inclusive in your financial package, but that financial package at some point it has to get paid. Um, you know, I mean, I still remember my grandma and grandpa talking with me about debt and, and, and the need to not go into crazy amounts of debt, especially when you're young, because when you're young, you think you're going to have all the money in the world, and you, you know you think that career is going to take off, and you're going to, you know, it's no big deal to pay back a student loan, but paying back a student loan at $800 a month or $500 a month, I, certainly that's going to impact anybody, regardless of your career field. So, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm excited to really get going. I mean, I think that obviously get the season started and and get through this year, uh, you know, help the kids that we've got in the program right now, and man, we've got some good ones. We've got some kids that are certainly Division One football players, guys that can play at a high level. There's no question, um, you know. So I'm excited to to get this thing going and get those kids where they need to be, and and equally excited to get back on, you know, uh, back, oddly enough, back on a high school sideline, um, but at multiple high schools on multiple sidelines and look at multiple kids and, and try to find a way that, um, you know, to to tell our story and and why it is that we believe we're the best option for them for their next step in their success. Well, we're very fortunate in that we're going to be featuring the HJCAC Game of the Week every Saturday. Called Games be called by yours truly on uh, Saturdays. Some games may be at 1 p.m., some games at 7 p.m., and we're kicking that off tonight against the Arizona Christian University Firestorm Club team. Looking forward to that. Coach, we're going to have you or one of the other coaches on week in and week out to kind of give us a, a state of the state and a breakdown. And we're looking forward to having you join us uh, again and, and definitely good luck in kicking off Season 5 tonight thank you very much i really appreciate you and all you know everything you've obviously done for our program in our league you know keeping us where we're at and, and continue to promote us and, and give us a shot to to keep growing i mean so we're certainly excited to partner again with you this year and you know look forward to getting out there tonight and getting this thing kicked off and actually started coach you're you're buying chompies for me uh, again this season right <laughs> Sure, at some point. Okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll do it on my timeline, though. I mean, oh. It's going to be a little later than there. Okay. It's easily open, I think. All right. He's a good guy. Okay. <laughs> Coach Doug Madoski uh, from the, the Maricopa Mustangs and the HJCAC. Looking forward to it. Game will be, Guys, head out to, if you can't catch the live stream tonight, definitely head out to Cortez High School, uh, 31st Avenue, and I think around Peoria. Um, you can obviously Google it, and it'll take you right there. 7 o'clock tonight, a lot of good football, a lot of young people with opportunities. Opportunity U, they call it and moving on and uh, as they face the Arizona Christian University Firestorm Club uh, with uh, Coach Kelly Moore who's been a mainstay here in the Valley as well so Doug Madoski
exciting stuff. Take it away, Aaron. I'm Shay Garrett with the Varsity Sports Show. With the 2024 Olympic Games happening next summer, teams are starting to form, specifically the typically dominant Team USA. Viewers are used to seeing big names sporting USA jerseys on the court, but this upcoming team, the standards are higher than ever. After watching the U.S. fall to Team Canada in the bronze medal game at the FIBA World Cup last week, LeBron James has already spoken out on his profound interest in being a part of the Olympic team. Since then, James has put his recruiting hat on and is single-handedly attempting to assemble an Olympic dream team. Now, how hard can this really be? It seems like any NBA player would dream of playing for a gold medal with billions of viewers on a global stage. Well, James has specific requests for the best of the best. These players include Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, Anthony Davis, Jason Tatum, Draymond Green, and Devin Booker. These are household names in the NBA, and you would think they would come to the Olympic experience, but is recruiting them that easy? Since most of the stars listed belong to teams that are playoff bound next summer, it could hurt in recruiting all of these big names. After a long NBA season, players may be reluctant to have a grueling summer at the Olympics. While LeBron has his sets set on bringing Team USA back to form, lo the logistics of the NBA team could be in his way. But as we've learned, when LeBron talks, people listen. And if King James commits to Team USA, some of the league's stars are sure to follow. With the Varsity Sports Show, I'm Shay Garrett. What's up? This is Ella Walter Sanchez with your Scottsdale Sports Report. This week, I wanted to bring you something a little different besides high school sports. This story comes from the community of Scottsdale, specifically at the Silverado Golf Club. This is the 10th consecutive year the golf club has held the run for cancer, which is either a 5K run, an 8K run, or a one mile walk or run around the course. The title itself is a little play on words and an ode to the location as it is in run F-O-R-E cancer, as in what you yell at a golf course when a ball is incoming. The race started in honor of Kathy Maxwell, who unfortunately lost her battle to cancer in 2012. Since then, they have raised over $360,000 for both cancer research and cancer treatment. All of the proceeds go to the University of Arizona Cancer Center in downtown Phoenix. This year, they are trying to break last year's donation of $20,000. They raise money by the cost of the race, with the 8K being $50, the 5K being $45, and the mile being $30. This year's race is coming up soon on September 24th at 9 a.m. Events like these are important because they start as a small remembrance and end up bringing the Scottsdale community and the sports community together in the fight against cancer. Who will you run for? If you want to learn more, visit them at runforecancer.itsyourrace.com. Again, that is run, F-O-R-E, cancer, dot, it's your race, dot, com. This is Ella Walter Sanchez with your Scottsdale Sports Report, signing off. Good morning, it's Lorenzo Lopez here from the Varsity Sports Show, and tonight, Phoenix Rising is back in town playing against Detroit City FC tonight at 7.30 p.m. The match is going to be taking place at the Phoenix Rising Stadium on 38th Street in Washington. Phoenix Rising is coming off a 0-0 draw against Tulsa FC, while Detroit City did win last week 2-1 against Miami FC at home. Rising is currently in 5th place with 42 points in the Western Conference, as they only set 5 points ahead of 8th place switchbacks who are holding on to that last playoff spot. Detroit City is currently sitting in 8th place in the Eastern Conference with 34 points, just 1 point from safety from FC Tulsa who has 33 points. The one thing going for Detroit City is their better goal difference as they're at a negative 4, while FC Tulsa has a negative 13. Both these teams will be playing to hold on to their playoff spots in their respective conferences, so that means there is a lot on the line. Expect a very intense and high scoring game for the full 90 minutes. Again, Phoenix Rising FC and Detroit City FC tonight at 7.30 at the Phoenix Rising Stadium at 38th Street in Washington. Lorenzo Lopez from the Varsity Sports Show. Welcome back to the Varsity Sports Show. My name is Zach Mott, and this week we'll touch on a story that resonated with me. For some background, I am a New Yorker, born and raised from 2002 up until moving to Arizona in late 2021. With the 22nd anniversary of the events of September 11th having passed on Monday, 
With the Jets hosting the Buffalo Bills, more than just a football game happened before our eyes on ESPN. For the second consecutive year, the Jets hosted a home game on this very tragic day, a day for remembrance for so many in attendance. The Jets, of course, held a ceremony before the game that truly meant so much for so many, but maybe none more than Jets head coach Robert Sala. To sum up an article written by Jets reporter for ESPN, Rich Semini, Sala's older brother, David, was working on the 61st floor of the South Tower of the World Trade Center on that horrific morning. David made it out just in time and was able to escape down the street and out of the path of destruction before the burning building tragically collapsed. Sala, like so many native New Yorkers, knew someone caught up in the towers and awaited the news as patiently as possible on this day. Around 4 or 5 p.m., he heard that David was okay and made it out alive. September 11th is a day so tragic to remember for so many, but for Sala, he wanted to ensure that it was understood that the New York Jets would remember and honor every single life lost in the North and South Towers that day. A beautiful ceremony to honor so many beautiful lives lost to this tragedy. For the Varsity Sports Show, I'm Zach Mott. Thank you for listening to the Varsity Sports Show, where our mission is to empower education and enable dreams, creating an unmatched platform to showcase talent both in front of and behind the microphone in radio, television, podcast, and live streaming. The Varsity Sports Show, still your home for youth, high school, college, and you in Arizona and beyond. Broadcasting from the Superbook Sports Studios, KTUS AM 1060, Tempe, Phoenix, and KSLX HD2, Scottsdale, Phoenix. Hey folks, I'm Joel R. Lambright with the Varsity Sports Show, updating you about high school and college sports in Arizona and East Texas. You can find me on X at Joel RL News. The Angry Crab Shack in Tempe, with an experience so good it remains indescribable, with something for every seafood lover. Try one of their amazing custom seafood boils, sandwiches, appetizers, and salads. Angry Crab Shack Tempe is located east of I-10 on Warner Road, 480-674-3847. The Angry Crab Shack in Tempe, come ready to eat. What's going on guys? My name is Tanner Torrell. I'm a senior at ASU at the Cronkite School. I'm super excited to be part of Varsity Sports, bringing you all the knowledge that I've learned over the years, covering baseball, softball, football, any sport you can think of, and I'm excited to bring that knowledge to you, the listener. Thank you so much, Tanner. AM 1060 KDUS Tempe Phoenix and KSLX HD2 Scottsdale Phoenix. <laughs> This program is paid for by the Varsity Media Foundation, a 501c3 nonprofit educational organization and its partners. You're listening to the Varsity Sports Show, home of Arizona's youth, high school, college sports, and you, empowering education and enabling dreams, right here on KDUS AM 1060 in Arizona. And now, welcome to the Varsity Sports Show. You are listening to the Husky Report with Horizon Husky football coach Andy Litton on the Varsity Sports Show, AM 1060, KDUS, Arizona. Welcome back to the Varsity Sports Show, AM 1060 KDUS, Arizona, here in hour number two. And this is the Husky Report. And while we await uh, Coach Andy Litton, we're going we're gonna to talk a little bit about Horizon and, and what, uh, what they've been doing lately. And they've, you know, had a, had a good season. Um, we're obviously still early in the season. Had a tough loss the other night. Uh, played uh, crosstown rival Pinnacle. Pinnacle's pretty darn good. I'll tell you what, I went out to Horizon uh, in the first, right at the start of the game, I was there a little bit in the first half. 
I could not find a parking space. You talk about people just flowing everywhere. There was, uh, you know, Horizons on 56th Street and Greenway, for those of you that, that know the valley. And, and there were cars lined up and down Greenway, all along the side streets. Um, if Guys, I would capitalize on this. If I had a house across the street, I would clear my front yard and charge parking fees because this, this was the game to do it. Um, finally, I found a space in back, made it in. Uh, right before kickoff and and got to see a little bit of, of some really, really darn good football. Unfortunately, uh, for Horizon, uh, you know, Pinnacle came away with the win, but a lot of teachable moments. I want to welcome uh, Coach Andy Litton. He's been joining us week in and week out here. Coach Litton, welcome to the Varsity Sports Show. Welcome back this week. Hey, thank you for having me. I'm going to turn it over to Lucas. Lucas Metzner, take it away, Lucas. Hi, Coach Litton. Lucas here. Three big wins to begin the season before a tough loss to Pinnacle. What's going to be the biggest adjustment going into next week against Millennium? You know, I think that we just need to make sure that we we clean up a lot of the mistakes. I felt like, you know, uh, we played uh, with Pinnacle, um, and it was our self-imposed mistakes on on third down on both sides of the ball uh, that really ended up getting us, you know, behind the chains or giving up big plays and. Um, so we're really going to focus on us and fixing our, our mistakes as we head into Millennium. Coach, let's talk about the two-headed monster because you're, you know, you've you've done, you've been very innovative working with with the kids that you have through the years. You know, year one, mm-hmm. you had some strengths. Year two, some other strengths. This year, it seems like you got a two-headed monster in the backfield in Anthony Segura and Bodie Zamorano. Right. Talk about those guys. Yeah, so they they kind of really complement each other. Anthony's kind of more our. Uh, our thunder where we, uh, we want a big back and can roll over people and, and be strong and physical and, and Bodie can do a lot more. He can catch the ball in the backfield. He's our lightning. He's got a little bit more speed, um, and wiggle to him. And so he's really good with our inside zone and, and what we're trying to do, you know, in terms of not just our, our run game, but our pass game too. Coach, uh, Lucas again, which player do you think you'll look to in order to help rally the guys with some leadership and help get the ship right once again? We have two really good captains that I think are going to do a really good job of getting guys focused again, and it's Carson Kolb, our inside linebacker. Um, he plays both ways, plays t- some tight end too for us. Um, but he's really our emotional leader. I could see him, you know, really helping us get back on track. And then Carter Lebruski is our is our big right tackle. Um, you know, I think that he'll do a really good job getting guys focused and uh, through his actions and leadership as well. All right, Coach Andy Litton. Coach, thanks again for joining us this morning. And, uh, you know, obviously some some good things the other night, some teachable moments as you guys gear up toward another good program. Yep. Good luck this coming week. Hey, thank you for having me. All right. That was Coach Andy Litton from Horizon. Uh, the Huskies, a lot of great families out there, a lot of great kids. And, you know, he mentioned a few of them. We talked about Bodie Zamorano. We talked about Anthony Segura. We talked about Carson Kolb on the defensive side. And, you know, Horizon's become somewhat of a tight end you. I mean, they, they're tight end last year, now at Baylor University. Carson's stepping into that role and playing both ways. Uh, it, it's defensively top-notch defense. Um, I Horizon will be back, you know, and I, I was having a conversation with one of the parents this past week, and, and you know, it's not – it's not where you are in terms of during the season. You can you can drop a game. You don't want to drop a game at the end of the season because if it's at the end of the season, meaning the postseason, you're done. And if you can get this one out of the way, clean it up, and move on, uh, you're going to be a force to be reckoned with. And nowadays, it, it seems it's rare that you find a team that completely runs the table. Um, you, you, you get more often state champions that come out of – one, two, three lost teams because they learn along the way, they lick their wounds, and they become stronger and better than ever. So anyway, that being said, congratulations, Horizon. You got the loss out of the way. Now move on, clean it up, and and win the rest of them. So anyway, that being said, uh, Coach Litton, thanks again for joining us here on the Varsity Sports Show. And Aaron, take it away. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Florida Sports Update. My name is Bennett Solomon, and today we'll be previewing a big matchup in college football this week between the Florida Gators and the 11th-ranked Tennessee Volunteers. The Gators will play their second-ranked opponent in three weeks, looking to earn their first win over a ranked opponent this season. In Week 1, Florida lost on the road to now 12th-ranked Utah, but they'll be at home in the Swamp this week to face SEC rival Tennessee. Wednesday, head coach Billy Napier said this is a special opportunity for his players and the fans. If you're an elite competitor, you 
you uh, live for opportunities like this. You know, these games, this is why you come to the University of Florida to play in these games, and certainly we're excited about playing in front of our crowd. But look, our, our players, they feed off of our fans. You know, they bring great energy, and uh, certainly they can make it difficult for the other team to play. That's exactly what we want them to do. One of the components Napier touched on was the dangerous defensive line the Vols have. Here's what Napier had to say about the front four. Big, long, twitchy, um, inside, powerful, on the edge. They've created issues. We've got several edge players that I think are um, significant and can create issues for you. Florida running back Trevor Etienne is ready for a physical game and understands the implications that a Florida-Tennessee rivalry brings. Like I said, they're pretty physical, you know, so coming into this game, we know we're going to have to play hard, and it's a big rival game. So we know we're expecting their best, and they're going to get ours, and I see it no other way. Florida and Tennessee will kick off Saturday at 7 p.m. With the win, the Gators will most likely enter the top 25 rankings, while a win for Tennessee would put them back in the top 10. That's your Florida Sports Update. I'm Bennett Solomon. And we're back on the Varsity Sports Live show. I'm... We're about to call in our, well, my broadcast partner for Arcadia, Bobby Murphy. Bobby Murphy and I have been calling some games for Arcadia. We've also been doing some camera work as well. And I mean, what, what's that been like? What, how does it feel working? You know, how's, what's the rapport been like working with Bobby, Connor? Well, last night was actually our first time calling games together. We had yeah. kind of been alternating between the broadcast right. booth and the camera, but it was, it was fun last night. We, you know, I've been, I've been taking him to the games. I've been really getting to know him and, uh, <laughs> It's been good. He's a great guy, and, you know, he really knows football. So it's a bit – it was a joy last night to call games with him, and, you know, I'm looking forward to next week. Okay. Well, let me ask you this question while I have you here, Connor. Um, how do you feel about that three-man rotation? Because in the past, it's always been kind of the same guys doing the same job, but this way there's been a rotation. That off week where maybe you're helping with production and kind of watching things, does that help? I I think it does. I think that it kind of alleviates a little bit of – you know, so, sort of what comes with the stresses of being broadcast because there's a lot of research you have to do before the game. So I think that, like, helping with production and, you know, worrying about camera work kind of helps. And, and then you're, you're kind of, like, revamped and ready to go for when you're going into the broadcast booth for sure. Nice. Let's, uh, let's bring Bobby on. So Bobby Murphy, a, a member of our broadcast and production team this semester with the Varsity Sports Show. Bobby, how you doing? Thank you for having me on this morning. All right. Bobby, I'm going to turn it over here to Connor. He had a couple questions for you regarding last night's game. Bobby, hope you're doing well. Good to, uh, good to uh, talk to you again. Um, I mean, we're we're calling a pretty good team right now in Arcadia, huh? And, I mean, yeah, this is our first, first 4 and start since 2019. The team all, all around is so balanced. We talk about it a lot. Of course, it's great having you on the calls with me. But, yeah, the offense has looked amazing. Last night they won 42-19. to 19. Braylon Rooney had his best game of the season, and he's improved so much as both a passer and a runner this year. But through four touchdowns last night, we talked to Jeremy Smith after the game who had two touchdowns, and one of them, that incredible Moss touchdown, which was just amazing. But, yeah, this team has just looked amazing so far, mostly on the offensive side. have looked really good defensively too, but the offense has definitely been their strength. Well, and, and it's funny you say that because, I mean, it's been so easy. Like there's always someone we could have as our player of the game every week. You know, Braylon Rooney is always going to give you those numbers and he's always a candidate, but it, it has been really quite a spectacle to see this Arcadia team. And I mean, they have a potential to really go far this year. Yeah. And just overall, I mean, they have a big game at Camelback next week. I think Camelback is one and three could be wrong, but yeah, traveling to Camelback next week, probably going to be one of their, their first big tests. Of course they had that Walden Grove game. Uh, a few weeks ago, that was really close. Came down to the end, but yeah, Camelback is going to be a, a big game. Of course, them being in 5A, going to be a big test for Arcadia. But Ray Brown's really happy with how his team has been playing this year so far. And of course, Brady. For we talk about Rooney a lot. We talk about all those receivers. Brady Force is one of the guys that we talk about the most, and he's just such a shifty, speedy back, and just a great guy to have in that backfield to complement Braylon Rooney. Yeah, absolutely. I mean. You just it seems like, you know, there were times in that first half when when Rooney was struggling a little bit, getting the ball in the hands of the receivers and force really picked it up. And then Rooney kind of came back and was feeling more form. And, you know, 
We I just found out earlier that uh, next week against Camelback, that's uh, that's Vince's school, so that'll be interesting yeah, to call yeah, that. That's it. Those Spartans. <laughs> yeah, they're down but not out, so you can't count those guys out, especially being a crosstown rivalry. But uh, Bobby, any I'm going to interrupt here really quick. Bobby, final thoughts, any takeaways from last night's game that that maybe you're looking for the rest of the season from Arcadia? Um, just more of a blowout than I thought it'd be. Coconino's a, a solid team. They did look really good earlier this year, but this is the best offensive showing that our kid has had all year. They dropped 30 in every game, dropped 42 last night, and it was just overall the best game I've seen from them this year and easily the best game from Braylon Rooney, who just continues to get better as a passer. All right. Bobby, thank you so much for being on with us. Looking forward to uh, being back in the broadcast booth with you next week, and we're going to go to break here. We'll be back well, we will, but but what's coming up next, though? That's the other thing. Uh, we have a, a conversation with Desert Mountain football coach Conrad Hamilton, who's always great. They're, they're coming off a big win the other night, a big win out at Cactus High School, a perennial powerhouse. So this Desert Mountain team is the real deal, and they have been the last few years now. Who knows? Do they have enough to put it over the top this season? Stick around, guys. When we come back from the break, we'll be joined by Coach Conrad Hamilton of the Desert Mountain Wolves here on the Varsity Sports Show. Vince in studio with Connor, Kobe, and Lucas. We'll be right back. here for KDUS AM 1060. Check out your favorite shows and games on 100.7 KSLX HD2. This is Conrad Hamilton, head football coach at Desert Mountain High School. You are listening to the Varsity Sports Show. Coaches, the Varsity Sports Show wants to be part of your team in 2023. We have a proven track record of providing the most coverage of your teams with Thursday and Friday night football. We will spotlight your players with multi-camera game broadcasts, pre- and post-game interviews, and segments on our Saturday morning radio show. With over 100 games broadcast in 2022, we will be exceptional for your team. Call, text, or email 480-220-4629 or info at varsitysportshow.com. Hey guys, Vince here to talk about Angel Dentistry. It's where my wife and I have gone for over 10 years and we trust them with our routine and extensive dental care because they care. Dr. Amber Angel is an Arizona native, born in the town of Miami and has been practicing in the Valley over 20 years. For general to comprehensive dental services, call 602-788-2008. Located off of Cave Creek Road, just north of the 101 in North Phoenix. Angel Dentistry, proud supporters of our young people and proud partners of the Varsity Sports Show. Ready to bring KDUS AM 1060 into your home with Alexa? Hi, I'm Alexa. Download the KDUS AM 1060 skill and enable. Then say, Alexa, open the KDUS AM 1060. This is where I start my day. Nobody pray for me. It's been a day for me. Welcome to the Wolves yeah, Recap yeah. with Desert Mountain football coach Conrad Hamilton. Welcome back to Varsity, the Varsity Sports Show. I am here joined with Desert Mountain head coach Conrad Hamilton. Conrad, how are you doing today? I'm doing good this morning. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. So my first question for you guys is, uh, Coach, you guys have been on fire to start off the year with a 4-0 record. What has stood out to you guys, about, to you, about the Wolves this year? <laughs> yeah, I don't know about on fire, but, you know, we're 4-0. We're winning and we're improving every week, so... You know, that's really the most important thing. Our guys are, are fully engaged, and I think that's really kind of what, that's what's standing out is our guys are committed to being the best they can be each and every day, right? And so that's something that we can be proud of for sure. But um, on the field, I think uh, uh, offensively, we're running the football very well. Our offensive line up front in the run game is doing a really good job. Um, you know, Colton Munt, Cole Tappen, James Cobb, all right, those guys, you know, we got a couple of newcomers, you know, Bryce Hevesy, Carson Shields, and then we'll have it. So those, those six guys that we use up front and, um, on the offensive line are doing a really good job of opening up holes for Max Shepard, who had his, you know, what, third um, 100-yard game this year out of the four. He rushed for, what, 23 for 138 the other night and a couple of touchdowns. He's really doing a great job. And the offensive line is also doing a good job of, of keeping um, – 
Brady clean in the pocket, you know. I don't know how many he's actually given up, but he haven't given up very many. So I think the offensive uh, guys up front are doing a good job. And then just defensively, you know, uh, with the exception of maybe last week where we didn't tackle great in space versus Chaparral, but um, we've been playing around the, the ball. I think this past weekend, um, uh, Cactus was the state runner-up. Maybe he had 70 yards total offense. I think there was a negative in the rush game, we sacked the quarterback six times. We picked all three passes. We sacked the ball behind the line of scrimmage quite a bit. So we're doing some good things. But, you know, the only thing that we're not doing well is from a disciplinary aspect is we're still committing too many penalties that are kind of setting us back, scoring the ball more, and then losing full position on the defensive side. Uh, my next question for you is how are you guys preparing for Campo Verde next week? Yeah, you know, um, uh, we just take, you know, they played last night. We played on Thursday. So, you know, I will go through our normal process of, of trading film, right, breaking down, you know, the last three, our offense and defense and special team staff will kind of put together, you know, uh, devise a plan to, to break down the film, put in all the stuff that we need to put the data from an analytical standpoint to, to comprise a game plan that we want to put together. Normally on Saturdays we'll meet with the with – the, um, the kids, we did that yesterday on Friday. We worked out, we ran, we watched the film, we reviewed. And now, you know, uh, we don't bring our staff in and spend 10 hours, you know, at the stadium. But we do all that work at home. We spend a lot of time away from our families as is. So, you know, we'll sit in front of some college football games a day, break down the film, and put the data that we need and, you know, have a staff meeting late Sunday night to whatever to, to talk about our ideas and how we're going to formulate it. But that's kind of how we've been doing it the last, you know, couple of years really since COVID and I think it's been a positive thing for our staff as well. Coach Hamilton Lucas here I got one question for you um, in three of your four games you won by multiple scores but the close one against Chaparral how do you feel about your team's composure to you know stay focused in close close games? Yeah well you know number one um, uh, Chaparral uh, they're a good football team I know they're gonna you know be challenged with the test of of playing against – there's a, a discrepancy, in my opinion, with 6A and 5A schools, right? You know, Chaparral's got a tough task to play against those 6A schools, but Chaparral's talent level as far as, like, on the skill side of the ball, um, you know, uh, Plaz Johnson's going to be the best receiver that was skill kid that we faced all year on our schedule. Um, the young quarterback over there is going to be the more most elusive quarterback that we faced on our schedule. Right, they have some good skilled guys on the defensive side of the ball. So I think, you know, for us, um, Chaparral game is always going to be a challenge, right? Rivalry games, emotions are high, all that stuff, whatever. So for us, we feel like I told our kids the other day, that Chaparral win could potentially be one of the better wins that we've had so far this year just because it was a tight game. It was 7-7 at halftime. We were actually down 14-7, to you know, mid-third quarter. We had to compose ourselves. We weren't playing great. Really offensively, you know, we recomposed. Our staff went back in, did a good job of, of, of making some adjustments, and we scored, what, three out of the last five drives we have to take the lead and, and win the ball game. And I think, you know, uh, it says a lot about your team when you don't really blink at adversity. If you just keep going out there trying to improve every rep, every series, every snap, all that, and, you know, they prevail. So I think that win will help us moving forward. And I think you saw it, you know, this Thursday night against a good Cactus team that um, – we played good. You know, we, we turned the ball over on offense, which wasn't ideal for sure. We had more penalties than we want on offensively over there, but we did do the thing as we ran the ball, all right, and then we played excellent defense. That was one of the most uh, dominating defensive performances at Desert Mount since we've actually been here as a staff. We're really proud of uh, um, the efforts that the guys put forth, and I think this last game we, we got a chance to play some other guys, which in turn – will improve our quality depth, you know, moving forward. We need, you know, guys that can play in rotation with our 2D because they do play a lot of guys both ways. So we got a, a chance to, to play some guys within not just mop-up duty but opportunities early in the game. Brody Olsen was outstanding on defense the other night, playing a lot for Max Sheffern, picked off a pass, broke up several, you know, was involved in pressure in the quarterback. Lucas Bumming's doing well. We had a freshman come in and play some safety. He had two sacks. His name is General Solomon. So we had a lot of guys that really 
did some things this past week that um, that is going to help us um, moving forward as well. So we're, we're pleased with that. Well, thank you so much, Coach Conrad Hamilton, for the time. Good luck to you guys next week. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your time. Have a good one. Desert Mountain yeah. football, amazing. What a run, and uh, they continue to roll. So, Aaron, take it away. Hi, I'm Aaron Decker with the Varsity Sports Show, and I'm going to be honest, I can't wait for the fall vibes to begin. Even though the 100 degree temperatures aren't showing it, fall is just around the corner, so I've been looking around town at what cities are doing to bring in the fall atmosphere, and I'm going to help you find lively events across Phoenix to enjoy in the fall. The city of Gilbert is kicking off the fall festivities with their debut of Harvest in the Heritage District. The city calls it a collection of themed events and experiences. Families can bring their kids to play with the interactive giant-sized jack-o'-lantern that's actually a playable xylophone. The six-foot-high and eight-foot-long display is surrounded by illuminated seating, and the city says it's a great spot for a photo op. Gilbert seemingly went big this fall, adding an 18-foot-long guitar-shaped slide for their Dia de los Muertos interactive installation. Along with the jumbo-sized displays, families can bring a blanket or lawn chair and attend the free family-friendly concerts in the park every Thursday in October from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. Don't miss out on the Hispanic Heritage Celebration on September 22nd, the Gilbert Farmer's Market on Saturday mornings, the Gilbert Art Walk, as well as plentiful events that the shops in downtown Gilbert will be adding. The festivities run from September 22nd through November 5th. For more information, such as locations, times, and dates, be sure to visit discovergilbert.com forward slash harvest for further information. Let's bring on the fall vibes. I'm Aaron Decker with the Varsity Sports Show. Mike check. Hello and welcome back to the Varsity Sports Show. My name is Tanner Tortorella and today I wanted to talk about the Sorora High School football program. Obviously a lot of news in the offseason when they hired Zach Hill, but I had the pleasure of covering the JV game this past Wednesday where I had an opportunity to talk to Nick Offenberger, the head coach of the JV squad, and I had a very intelligent and insightful conversation where he was talking about the program as a whole. Obviously, Varsity has had their success through the past few years, but that sort of success has developed through the whole program. That is the cause for all this. Offenberger is also the head of the under-14 squad that Soror likes to be a part of, a part of the youth program called Future U. And he talked about how some of the kids on this squad has been with this coaching staff for since they were 10 years old. This is a multi-year progress since they are children to when they become young adolescents entering high school. Offenberger also mentioned how the transition from Hale to the previous regime has been a smoothless transition and has only amplified the process of getting these kids antiquated to this culture and this family that the Sabercats like to preach. And Offenberger puts a lot of the credit for that tradition of bringing up these kids from those youth programs to the field for their on-field success and has so far seen the payoff as they were the 2020 won state champions and this year had the same aspirations with Hill seamlessly fitting in. My name is Tanner Torrella with Varsity Sports signing off. I'm Stephen Buxton with the Varsity Sports Show, and today we're wandering out of the sports world a little bit. We're going to talk about Taylor Swift. Everyone knows that the biggest event in music this year has been Taylor Swift's Eras Tour. Well, recently, it was announced that the tour is going to be hitting the big screen. Taylor Swift signed a deal with AMC to create a movie rendition of her tour, and the movie will hit theaters on October 13th. It won't just be limited to AMC theaters, though. There have been deals struck between AMC and several other theaters to show the movie. The deal is going to be a goldmine for Swift. Some reports state that she will receive over 50% of the total profits. Some experts estimate the whole production with merchandise and ticket sales will be worth well over a billion dollars. We'll see in October if the whole project lives up to expectations. 
But that's all I've got for now. I'm Stephen Buxton with Varsity Sports signing off. And I'll write your name. What up, fight fans? The time has finally come as UFC strawweight champion and Mexico's first female MMA champion, Alexa Grasso, defends her title against former strawweight champion and number three ranked pound for pound fighter in the world, Valentina Shevchenko. It's a rematch from last year as Grasso shocked the world and submitted Shevchenko with a rear naked choke, taking the title away from her. The champ is ready for her opponent. But the pressure is on her with Mexican Independence Day and thousands of Latino fans rooting for her. Failure is not an option. Shevchenko states that she has been waiting for this moment since the loss and can't wait to take the belt back and stop the party. The champ says she knows how dangerous Valentina is, but has a new game plan for this fight. In the same card, Phoenix's own Tracy Cortez will take on Canadian Jasmine Jesuravicius in a flyweight division. Cortez is back after a year layoff due to injury and looking to build on her 10-1 record. A win will put Cortez right back in the championship discussion. For Varsity Sports, I'm Dorian Zavala. Welcome back to the Varsity Sports Show, AM 1060. So when we come back from the break, we're going to be joined on the Sabercat Report with Saguaro Sabercat head football coach Zach Hill. Big win the other night. Big win the other night, and looking forward to hearing from him as they prepare for their trip to California, as well as other coaches. Stay with us, guys. Go Varsity. Need social information about KDUS AM 1060? Try KDUS 1060.com at KDUS AM 1060 on Twitter and Facebook.com slash KDUS AM 1060. Hi, this is Mike from Beachin' with Beal, and you're listening to the Varsity Sports Show. The Angry Crab Shack in Tempe. With an experience so good, it remains indescribable. With something for every seafood lover. Try one of their amazing custom seafood boils, sandwiches, appetizers, and salads. Angry Crab Shack Tempe is located east of I-10 on Warner Road, 480-674-3847. The Angry Crab Shack in Tempe. Come ready to eat. Hey guys, Vince here. I'd like to introduce you to my friend, Eric Perry. He owns Eco Roofing Solutions. They're local and a big supporter of high school sports all over Arizona. Yes, they're statewide. A little bit about me and Eco Roofing Solutions and what we're about. I'm a third generation roofer here in Arizona and I've been doing this for 25 years. Call Eric and his team at Eco Roofing Solutions, 480-695-7736 and they'll give you a fast, free, no-nonsense estimate. Tell them Vince sent you. This is Saguaro Sabercat football coach Zach Hill, and you're listening to the home of Sabercat football, the Varsity Sports Show on AM 1060 KDUS Arizona. Your caddy, Ray Adams, takes you beyond the 18th hole on Saturday mornings with Great American Golf from 6 to 7 a.m. on KDUS AM 1060. Listening to the Sabercat Report with our dad, Coach Zach Hill, on the Varsity Sports Show. Welcome back to the Varsity Sports Show, AM 1060 KDUS Arizona. I love that intro. That was uh, Athletic Director Matt Harris's idea to have uh, Coach Hill's kids record the intro. I could just picture knowing Coach Hill. He's, you know, he's a little bit, uh, he can be a little intense, you know. I could see him in the living room with the kids with the whiteboard and the dry erase markers, you know, saying, okay, you're going to say this there. You're going to say this. You're going to say this. Ready? Break. And uh, they executed it. I think he said they got it done in one take. So that's pretty good. Uh, as we wait for, for Coach Hill to join us here on the line, I want to talk a, a little bit about Saguaro. And, and any time you step into a program, brand new, you know, as a, it doesn't matter if you have 20 years of experience coaching, 30 years or two years. If you're a new head coach, a lot of things, there's a lot of dynamics involved. First of all, you you got to get your team to buy into what your message is, the culture that you're trying to build. Because there's always going to be change, even with a program that's won 13 state championships over only a handful of head coaches. It, it, it's a culture shift. And no matter how much you try and keep things the same, there's always going to be something that changes. So you have your team that has to buy in. 
You have your administration, the people that sign your paychecks that got to buy into your message. Obviously, if they're handing you the keys to the to the caddy, uh, you, you know, the, you got to get them to buy in. And then lastly, and probably in my opinion, which arguably is the most important, aside obviously from your team buying in, you got to get the community. You got to get the parents because not everything is going to be, you know, as as uh, as Sylvester Stallone and Rocky Rocky would say, you know, uh, uh, sunshine and and uh, you know rainbows rainbows and unicorns. It's not always going to be that way. You know, there's going to be those days where it's going to be a little tougher, and you need that community support. And it feels like Coach Hill is is getting all three in in some respects from week to week. Um, so kudos to him. Congratulations as he does that. And. You know, having been the having covered the Saguaro Sabercats the last couple of years now, this is year number three for us in, in having been behind the mic for two of those years and this year stepping away uh, and, and turning the keys over temporarily um, uh, to, to another crew to do that. It, it was very enlightening to me to kind of see how things are, are playing out at Saguaro and, and the building and the culture shift and the mindset. And Coach Hill is doing a really masterful job. They're sitting at 3-1 and one right now uh, in the 6A Northeast Valley. And they bumped up to 6A. And, and obviously, they've been an open team the last couple of years, you know, with selection postseason. But now they have a le- legitimate, not that their schedule hasn't been legitimate in the past, but they got a 6A schedule. So we're talking, you got ALA Queen Creek. They won that game by a couple of scores. You got Mountain View out of Mesa. And they, they won that game by a couple of scores. Basha four-point loss this was a rematch of the state championship uh game the open championship and uh and kind of licking their wounds after that game a couple things could have happened after that game they could have come out with a vengeance with their next game which was this week or they could have stayed in the dumps and they chose the former and they came out and they made a statement they had a statement win against the uh, Shadow Ridge Stallions, and joining us on the line, Coach Zach Hill. Coach Hill, welcome to the program. First of all, congrats on the win the other night. Thank you. No, I appreciate it. It was uh, it's always good to go on the road and a little bit longer trip and and get the W. So, guys were excited. Now it was a it was a pretty convincing win. Obviously, forty one to nine. Did you guys execute everything you wanted to do in that game, or what were some specific takeaways that it was like, man, I wish we would have done that a little better. Well, you know, we were we were pretty limited possessions. We were uh, looking back at the game. I think we only ran like 38 offensive plays, so we, we were we were limited in the amount of plays that we called. I mean, it was it was really pretty close at the the first half. I think it was 20 to, 20 to three at halftime. So I thought they they uh, they did a good job of staying on the field as an offense and uh, up front. I thought their line did a, did a pretty good job. Um, offensively, you know, we we hit some things early and scored early on them. Um, you know, stalled out a couple of drives there in the first half, um, and, and then again, just kind of had some limited possessions. But um, you know, I thought our guys they, they played hard and and uh, you know executed when we needed to, and um, converted converted some, some fourth downs there too to, to extend drives. And, uh, but yeah, I thought I thought overall it went good. Now you talked about a little bit of the distance and heading out to the West Valley. Uh, I'm going to ask you one final question here. We've only got a minute or so left, but you're going to have a little further distance to go this week. You're going out to Sierra Canyon, which came to us last year. Uh, What are you expecting there? Yeah, I mean, that's going to be a a hard-fought ball game. I mean, they're a good football team. They're 4-0 right now. Um, I know their head coach. I've I've recruited that that high school before, and, and we have a good relationship. And uh, so I know they got a lot of a lot of good players, and um, you know, going on the road and kind of having that college feel type trip is going to be fun for our guys, and being able to stay at a hotel and and uh, you know, face a, a great opponent like Sierra Canyon is going to be uh, exciting. Awesome, Coach Zach Hill with the SaberCat Report, Coach. Congratulations so far, three and one on the season as you continue to build on uh, on the culture shift and and you know keeping some th- trying to keep some things the same while building and, and adding your own flavor to it. And you're doing a masterful job. Good luck this week heading out to Southern California. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Take it away. I'm Parker Garage from the Varsity Sports Show, and has the world caught up to America in basketball? 
Over the last handful of weeks, most of the world's best basketball players were representing their country in the 2023 FIBA World Cup. There was lots of highly touted teams coming into the event, such as France, Australia, and Canada, but almost everyone had their eyes on the USA. The team was constructed mostly of young stars from the NBA, like Tyrese Halliburton, Anthony Edwards, and Mikal Bridges, but ultimately, this was not the best product the U.S. has put out on the world stage. Losing in the group round to a very tough Lithuania team was just the beginning of the team's downfall. They ended up in the semifinal game against a German team led by the Wagner brothers, Dennis Schroeder, and Daniel Tice, who beat them by two points and ultimately propelled Germany to win the FIBA World Cup. But with that loss, that sent the U.S. down to the bronze medal game, taking on Canada. This was a battle from the start that saw Canadian superstar Shea Gilgis Alexander and the supporting cast of many young players in the NBA defeat the U.S. and hand them a fourth place finish. But now comes the question, what will happen at the 2024 Paris Olympics? According to many reports, NBA great LeBron James has already started to talk to players about forming what some have already called the Avengers of Basketball. Time will only tell, but for right now, I could say the world has finally caught up to the U.S. in basketball. I'm Parker Garage with the latest from the Varsity Sports Show. Welcome back to the Varsity Sports Live Show. I'm Connor Manning here welcoming our guest, Coach Jake Barrow from Corona del Sol. Coach Barrow, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing all right. How are you guys? We're doing all right as well. Thank you for joining us. First thing I wanted to talk to you about, Corona has really been through the gauntlet the last three weeks, facing off against three top 10 teams in the state with a combined record of 12-0. What sort of lessons and takeaways come with the experience of going against these top programs? Yeah, you know, it's it's, it's by design, right? So, you know, last year, um, you know, everybody's kind of aware we, we, we went 8-2 and two and won our region, and, you know, we're feeling good about that. Uh, but we lose in the first round of the playoffs, or we lost in the first round of the playoffs. Um, so that that was a big letdown and disappointment uh, we felt. And so basically this year we thought, you know, let's play a tough non-conference schedule. Let's play a tough uh, beginning of the season schedule. And, and you know, it, it really couldn't get too much tougher than, than what we've faced the last three weeks. And we faced, like you said, three top ten teams in a row and then uh one of them top 20 in the nation um last night and so it's just kind of one of those things where we're trying to see what it looks like and prepare our prepare our players for for being uh more battle tested going into the playoffs because uh, really you know the only thing that matters is winning playoff games right you, you can you know have whatever regular season record you want but unless you win playoff games it doesn't really do you any good so that was the idea behind it, and uh, it seems to be working. I mean, I think we're getting better each week, and, you know, our players are, you know, really seeing what, what they need to do and how to step up and get better. Well, you were talking about being battle-tested. This upcoming week, you got another big test against a good school in Marcos Denisa, a fellow Tempe school. What sort of, like, what sort of excitement level is going to that game? What are you trying to tell the players to get them ready for that one? You know, we're we're treating it just like any other game. Um, we really are. It's it's going to be treated just like the last three weeks were. You know, um, you know, you're going to prepare for everybody just like you're playing a top twenty in the nation team, and so that's how we're going to go into Marcos. Um, I know the Marcos game has traditionally, uh, historically, uh, some some meaning to some people. The Corona Marcos game uh, used to be a, somewhat of a rivalry. Um, I, I know our players really don't see it that way uh, just because the game hasn't been played in, in a long time. And um, our kids just, you know, see it as another game and, and another non-conference game before we head into the bye week and head into region play. So we're just preparing just like it's anything else. Coach, it's Vince here. I, I've got a quick question for you. As I look at your schedule and you talk about, you know, the importance of, of I mean, the fact that, you know, you, you had the lesson last season in the postseason with Mesa, and now you know you're you're in a, a little bit of a. You've got some teachable moments going on, yeah. Coach. You pull this off, you're going to be a genius this year because your strength of schedule has to be among the toughest in the nation. Would you agree? 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it is. Um, uh, you know, when you look at the strength of schedule, the max prep strength of schedule out there, we are one of the toughest uh, in the state of Arizona, no doubt. Uh, top three, most difficult. Um, so, you know, that that's, you know, it's a double-edged sword, right? You know, you want to be battle-tested and prepared, but also, you know, losing three in a row isn't fun either. And, and you have to keep your kids focused and, and, you know, keep them long-term on the long-term goal. And so uh, that's, that's the challenge we're facing right now. All right, that was Coach Jake Barrow, head coach of the Corona del Sol Aztecs football team. Thank you so much for being with us this morning, and good luck next week. Thank you. Wow. You talk about powerful, and, and Coach Barrow is one that's very even-keeled. I mean, he'll mix it up. He'll he'll change whatever he's doing at the drop of a hat. He scheduled tough non-conference opponents early. I mean, these are all freedom teams on their schedule, and it's been a, it's been a rough go, but there's been a lot of lessons learned. I have extreme we have extreme confidence at, at coach borrow and they'll uh, they'll get things right and and you'll wait and see this is going to be one of the top teams by season ends uh in the schedule and uh it, amazing anyway when we come back from the break stick around guys we got one more segment we're going to be joined by gcu club women's hockey coach jess conlin here after the break on the varsity sports show go varsity Tune in weekdays to the Sports Zone with Bob Kemp from 9 to 10 a.m. on KTUS AM 1060, KTUS1060.com, and with the KTUS 1060 app. Hello, everyone. My name is Bennett Solomon, and I'm a senior journalism student at the University of Florida. I'm thrilled to be joining the Varsity Sports Show, and I'll be providing local sports coverage in Florida. You can find me on Twitter at B underscore Sale 11, and I can't wait to get started. Coaches, the Varsity Sports Show wants to be part of your team in 2023. We have a proven track record of providing the most coverage of your teams with Thursday and Friday night football. We will spotlight your players with multi-camera game broadcasts, pre- and post-game interviews, and segments on our Saturday morning radio show. With over 100 games broadcast in 2022, we will be exceptional for your team. Call, text, or email 480-220-4629 or info at varsitysportshow.com. Hey, this is Ralph Farrell, Carefree's number one sports enthusiast. And I want to tell you about a new radio show that's really hitting the spot. The Varsity Sports Show, which takes care of everything from high school, junior high school, college, community college, sports. you got to listen to it. It's on 1060 AM, Arizona. No? Yes? <laughs> that's okay. Have you downloaded the KDUS AM 1060 skill for Alexa yet? Dude. Alexa is frustrated. No matter how many times do you ask, the answer is mail, chicken. Once you're ready, say Alexa, open KDUS AM 1060 to listen to your favorite shows. Welcome back to the Varsity Sports Show, AM 1060 KDUS, Arizona. Welcome back. Final segment. And uh, what a way to, to start to slowly transition out as uh, as we talk about and, and introduce, reintroduce our partnership with Grand Canyon University Club Sports. So exciting. Such a great opportunity for us, uh, for, for them, for our audience to be exposed to something different. I love education. I love exposing people and being exposed to, to kind of cool different things and uh, GCU Club is is something of a, a growing into a monster here in the valley and leading the charge for the GCU women's club hockey team is Jess Conlin. Uh, coach Conlin is uh, she's in her first year as a head coach. She was a uh, previous two years as an assistant. Uh, we want to welcome her to the program and have her talk a little bit about her program. Coach Conlin, welcome to the Varsity Sports Show. Hey, thanks so much for having me. Coach, we are so excited to to feature uh, your program this fall. It's going to be a lot of fun. We can't wait. And and we're actually, you know, we're gearing up for it. Um, and we want to learn a little bit about, about your program and, and what what it's meant to, to the community here. First of all, you know, we live in the desert, and but hockey is a proven commodity here. We get a lot of folks from out of town that have, have really been indoctrinating us into to hockey and and uh, and the growth. Talk about the growth of the program and what you've seen the last couple of years at GCU. Absolutely. So we're going into our seventh season as a hockey program. Um, 
having a, a women's team here in Arizona, I mean, that's that's huge for development and, and hockey across the Valley. Just being able to represent on the women's side uh, at GCU is an, is an absolute honor. Um, being seven years in, we've been growing every single year. Uh, we don't we don't think that's going to stop, though. We end up with a, a lot of players from out of state, but we're so fortunate that we're able to pull players as, as the game is growing out here in the Valley. We're able to pull players uh, from the Valley, too, allowing players to – to, to play in their home state, which is a, a really cool opportunity, I think, for, for so many players. Coach, this is Connor Manning here. And last season, I think there's no question, was really the best season for this program, finishing with 10 wins for the first time. This upcoming season, though, you've got quite the loaded schedule, taking on Maryville, University of Jamestown, Midland, and, of course, your rival Arizona State. What is that like, having such a tough schedule for the season? I think we're ready for it. I mean, last year, of course, Great season we had last year, but we're only gro- we're only going up from here. So to have such a loaded schedule, I think our team is is absolutely ready for it. Um, but I think that they're just excited to really prove themselves and, and show what the schedule really means to us as a program. Hi, Kobe Van Nort here. I have a question for you. Speaking of the schedule, I'm curious, what game are you most excited for coming up this season, and why? I'm excited for the first one. I think I think being able to to just start soon. I mean, we, we've been We've been practicing. We've got um, we've got some scrimmages coming up before our first game against Maryville. But I think that first game is really going to set the tempo and set the the tone for the season. So I'm I'm most excited for that first game against Maryville. Coach Connor Manning back here. I want to bring back something special from last year: being able to play in the first ever game at the new Mullet Arena. What was that like? That was uh, the, the energy there was awesome. I mean, we had so much support from our community. We had almost all the Kachina, which is the, the the local girls hockey program. We had almost all the teams there to support during that game, and it was a, a an, an energetic atmosphere. We we had a lot of fun during it. Uh, of course, we, we really wanted to, to take that one home at their at their first ever home game there, but uh, we're we're looking forward to doing that this year instead. Coach Lucas here. Uh, I got a question. What makes GCU special to you? You've been all over. You're from Alaska. You've been at University of Minnesota Duluth. What makes GCU special? GCU is special because of the players. The, the players that come to play, they're committed. They are. They're here for a reason. They. The the energy that the team brings, the culture that the team has. It's, it's special. It's like no other team that I've ever seen before, and it's just different. This, this group is just different, so I'm excited to, to keep going this year. Coach, we are excited as well, and I got to tell you, you know, last year playing in the in the championship game against ASU, and you've got a, a, a run of a, a couple, a triple header coming up. I know you don't like to look ahead, but what are you expecting from from a, a game like that? Not only within you know your two programs, but in the overall community. So we're we're looking forward to growth every day. I mean, whether or not the wins happen sooner rather than later, it's growth every day. Uh, the the end result here, getting into getting into playoffs, getting qualifying for playoffs with WWCHL. Uh, winning the WWCHL and then getting into nationals. That's that's the goal long term. So what we're looking at is we're just looking for growth every day that leads up to that that overlying goal at the end of the season. You had talked about uh, the you know the following that you've developed here and with the Kachinas, the the youth hockey that that's been been really growing here. How it, I this is kind of a leading question, but in terms of of affecting your recruiting, is it getting easier? It's getting easier, absolutely. Uh, I've, I had the pleasure of starting with the Kachinas about five years ago uh, with a lot of the, the, the U14 players that I had at the time. They're now going into the U19 program. Uh, they're going into their senior year of high school. They're maybe taking a gap year, and they're, they're getting ready for college. It's, it's, it's very exciting to be able to see players get skilled and, and be talented where you know, maybe I won't have to, to work so hard to be pulling players uh, from out of state. Now I have a ton of players here with the Kachinas that I can that I can choose from and that are excited to to make their commitment to to GCU. That's Jess Conlin from uh, the the brand new head coach of the GCU Women's Club Hockey Program. Coach, thanks so much for joining us here on the Varsity Sports Show. Looking forward, we're honored and privileged to be covering the, you this year, and looking forward to having you back on. 
Thank you so much. Appreciate you having me. All Love right. Up. He loafs up. There you go. So that was a great interview. You know, and I'll tell you what, uh, with where they're playing, so that both the men's and women's team are splitting their home games at two locations, which is masterful. Uh, it's genius because you're getting a chance for, for people on both sides of the valley to see them in Peoria and then at the old uh, – they, they, it's called Arcadia Ice. It used to be called Tower Plaza. My memory is growing up in Phoenix at Tower Plaza. Uh, this is predates you guys, but I uh, I went to a, I went to summer. They used to have double feature at the movie theaters there at Tower Plaza, and I saw for a dollar I saw Breakin' and Beat Street. And I was the only kid in the audience with no parachute pants on. So anyway, that that's another story for another day. But uh, we're talking mid-80s here. So Arcadia Ice, great little intimate venue to watch some hockey. It's going to be a lot of fun this season. Really check out GCU Club and all their sports. Ooh, God, guys, what a show. It flew by, didn't it? Connor, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, it was really good to hear from a lot of the coaches, especially the GCU Club hockey coaches. Definitely, you know, on the other end, playing for ASU, it's interesting to hear their perspective. And, you know, they're really a program on the rise for sure. And, you know, it was great talking to Jeff Alba again. Yeah. And, you know, I get to talk to him every week before the games at with Arcadia. Arcadia. Yeah. And, you know, it's it's also good to, good to you know, get to see another side, you know, talking to him in the mornings. And uh, I'm excited for that program as well as many of the other programs we're covering. Kobe, what about you? Highlights of today. Oh, I, I just think it was just a great time being able to interview the Brophy coach. I think yeah. it was it was cool to hear coach the Cotton, perspective. Yeah. yeah, Coach Cotton from everything that they've kind of gone through this season and just how they've been rolling. Lucas, what about you? I love our variety of guests. You know, football's my favorite sport, and I could talk high school football for hours and hours and hours. But it's so good to hear about the variety of what's going on, you know, getting to talk to Matt Stone about Hamilton High School girls mm-hmm. flag football. Jess Conlin with GCU Women's Club Hockey. You know, I love the diversity we got going on here. All right. Big thank you to our co-hosts this morning in studio, Lucas Metzner, Kobe Van Nort, Co- Connor Manning, our guest, uh, Saguaro Coach Zach Hill, Horizon Coach Andy Litton, Corona Coach Jake Barrow, Brophy Assistant Coach Tony Cott, and Jeff Alba from Arcadia Football, Desert Mountain Coach Conrad Hamilton, uh, Hamilton Flag Football Coach Matt Stone, GCU Club Men's Hockey Coach Danny Roy, and Women's Hockey Coach Jess Conlin. Be sure and check out all of our archive content on Twitter, at Varsity Show, as well as Instagram, Facebook, Thanks to our in-studio producer, Aaron Decker. We'll see you back here next week. And now it's time for JR's Texas Tales. Andy was born as a third culture kid. His childhood marked by constant movement due to his father's military service. Andy's dad, known as a lone wolf motorcycle enthusiast, rejected biker gang rivalries and instead found common ground among them through charitable work. This upbringing instilled in Andy a deep commitment to understanding others. As technology evolved in the late 80s and early 90s, Andy's patience and vision became clear. He saw the potential of electronic devices to bridge gaps, even in a world where computer knowledge was often met with disdain. When his son was born with a disability, Andy embraced the diversity he had cherished among fellow geeks. In 2014, Andy Taylor, spelled just like the one in Mayberry, founded Geek Easy, a gaming haven on Kilgore's Main Street, fostering a sense of acceptance and inclusivity within the community. It was here that he collaborated with Ricky Custer, owner of Geektopia, to create the annual Gore Geek End Festival. Beyond gaming and fandoms, Andy championed causes like the House of Hope Shelter, created local Facebook groups for community engagement, and inspired others to pursue their childhood dreams. After Geek Easy, Andy became the eSports coach at Gilgore College, leading seven teams and 40 players. He transformed the gaming arena into a place where young talents still thrive and compete through scholarships. Today, as a Director of Marketing and Web Design at Rose Retirement Financial Services in Longview, he helps clients secure their financial futures.
Thank you for listening to the Varsity Sports Show, where our mission is to empower education and enable dreams, creating an unmatched platform to showcase talent both in front of and behind the microphone in radio, television, podcast, and live streaming. The Varsity Sports Show, still your home for youth, high school, college, and you in Arizona and beyond. Broadcasting from the Superbook Sports Studios, KTUS AM 1060, Tempe, Phoenix, and KSLX HD2, Scottsdale, Phoenix. Finding care that understands your needs can feel complicated.